Hey guys, basically I've been meaning to upgrade my PlayStation 5 with an SSD for a while. You know, obviously it's quite expensive. I think even one terabyte without hitting is about £180 in the UK. So it's Black Friday now and I have managed to find some really good deals. So basically I ended up picking up this 980 Pro from Samsung. This is the one terabyte model without heatsink which means I also have to buy an external heatsink. I'm going to leave uh, links for these in the description below. Um, I have actually never installed um, an SSD without heatsink in my laptop or PC before, so this is my first time trying to install a heatsink. So let's see how it goes. So as I said, mine is a 1TB model, available for a decent price of £124, which is pretty good. The read speed quoted by Samsung is 7000, but I doubt I'm gonna actually get that. I mean, in the box you get your M2 SSD and some instructions on how to install. You know, Samsung recommends that you update the firmware using Samsung Magician, but I don't think it's necessary. Plus, you'll need to install this to a PC to do that anyway, so I don't think I can be bothered. <laughs> so with the heatsink, I got this from Amazon for just 14 pounds and has a lot of positive reviews. So out of the box you get the heatsink which is two parts uh, along with the heatsink and the base, a screwdriver, fixing screws and also three thermal pads which is handy in case you mess up the first one. The instructions manual doesn't really have a lot of detail except this picture which I guess could have been better but I guess generally the installation is pretty straightforward so not a big deal. Okay so let's get the SSD into the heatsink. So first step is to apply the thermal pad onto the heatsink base, making sure it's firmly applied and it doesn't expand beyond the length of the heatsink. If it does, just make sure you cut it off with scissors. Next, apply the second thermal pad onto the heatsink, again making sure it's firm and lines up properly, leaving space for the screw. Now it's time to place the SSD. So initially, I made a mistake here. The SSD should actually be placed other way around where 980 logo is visible when you place the SSD into the base. Once you check everything is firm and both the front and back are aligned properly in order to slot the SSD into the PS5, uh, tighten this with the provided screws. There are six screws in total that you need to apply and that's pretty much it. You're now ready to install this into your PS5. Okay, so next unplug the PS5 from all the power, obviously. A lot of people have said it's tricky to remove the plate, but to be honest, if done correctly, it is pretty easy to remove. All you need to make sure is your PS5 logo is facing down and the disc tray is facing away from you. Use your right hand to grip the edge of the bottom right corner and your left hand to grip the edge of the top left corner of the cover and gently push to the left and it comes off super easily. That's it. Once inside, before you start your insulation, I'd recommend giving it a quick tidy up using a vacuum cleaner. I had a lot of dust on the fan and my vents, so I'm sure you all remember the helicopter that the PS4 Pro was, so <laughs> tidy up to avoid that. So first, remove the screw for the expansion slot. The screw is actually quite cool, it comes with PlayStation logos on it, wow. Now take off the slot cover and you will see many screw holes. The one you need for an M2 SSD is 80. So remove the spacer screw and the spacer, slot the spacer into AT. You will need this to screw the SSD in later. Now slot in the SSD, making sure the pins are aligned to the slot on the PS5. This was where I realized I did it wrong first time, so make sure it looks like this before slotting it in. Once it's slotted, apply the screw into the spacer and tighten it, making sure it doesn't move. Now put the slot cover back on, screw it tight and slide the PS5 cover back into the place till you hear a click. That's pretty much it. You're ready to plug your PlayStation back to your TV now and let the new SSD work. So turning on the PS5, this is the first screen you will see. Here you'll need to format the new drive, so choose format M2 SSD. This is fairly quick and took me like 5 to 10 seconds. Then you will be shown the read speed. Remember I said in the beginning that I doubt we'll get the 7000 write speed that Samsung claims. Anyways, as expected, this is giving me about 5564 write. I mean, it's just pretty good to run all the next titles, so you know I'm not too bothered about it. So once you log in, 
if you go into the settings menu you can now see the new drive and this is where you can move titles on the inbuilt storage okay now let's try and copy some games into the ssd to see if i see any lags or any long load times etc first game i will try is a new guardians of the galaxy this is such an awesome game i'm a big fan of the movies and this game really resonated with me okay so that was really quick wow like 10 seconds let's see how the game plays now all good so far i mean same load time as before so let's try playing the game Okay, so everything kind of worked as expected. Um, you know, I literally didn't notice any difference, so this is perfect. Okay, I'll try one more game. Let's try Control this time. Again, copying over is super fast. Let's try the actual game for any lags or pop ins. Alright, so as expected, this also works pretty seamless and I'm glad to say the installation is actually successful. Yay! Okay, so that wasn't too bad. It was much easier than I thought. You know, luckily it worked. But anyways, a couple of things to remember are that you make sure you place the SSD properly inside the heatsink so that it aligns with the port on the PS5 and also making sure there's plenty of space once you insert the SSD to make sure there's enough space for the spacer so that you can lock it in with the screw. Also as you saw the games pretty much work the same way as they worked on internal SSD which is awesome so that means no more uninstalling, installing, uh, I was kind of fed up of that. Anyways if you made it all the way to the end of the video thanks a lot for watching if you have any questions you know it's pretty simple everyone can do it but if you have any questions please feel to drop down in the comments below um, otherwise I'll see you next time.